Okay, welcome back to VMworld. Uh, this is theCUBE, VMworld 2013, live in San Francisco. Day three of three days of coverage. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org, and our next guest is Sean Douglas, who is the CTO of Service Mesh. Uh, very timely conversation to come on theCUBE right after Pat Gelsinger. Dave and I are all, all jacked up and, and amped up for uh, a great conversation. Um, you worked at EMC, EMC Ventures, so you know a little bit about what Pat was talking about. Absolutely. And uh, honestly, we, we rattled him a little bit and called me out on my comment, but I kind of didn't really mean that the way it did. We'll explain that in like six blog posts. It'll be fun. <laughs> um, welcome, welcome to theCUBE again. Right on, thank you for having you. me. Great. So, uh, yeah, so you're, you're, a, you're, you're a tech athlete. You, you've been studying the up and downs of what's going on in storage at EMC, yeah. and you're now at Service Mesh, which is one of the, lead, the leader in orchestration, the high end of the stack. Orchestration and service management, these aren't new concepts. Right. But with infrastructure as a service and what Pat laid out with Software Defined Data Center, it brings up and highlights the importance of it when you want to get to automation right. and orchestration. Absolutely. And you know, as much as the, the rhetoric is out there, it's still an open book on orchestration. Mm -hmm. I mean, every client, every customer has a different process. You can't just throw software at it and say we're done. Right. So explain the, the nuance in this area of the stack. Absolutely, so it's a, it's a tough act to follow your old boss, you know what I mean? So I was working for Pat, we helped define software, define data center, what that meant, and uh, it's great. In his keynote yesterday, he talked about what's the, what are the three things that VMware is doing. One is software defined data center and virtualization of everything, trying to get the ROI of what they, they got traditionally on the um, server in the hypervisor, now in the network, now in the storage, right, and taking that. And then second thing he said is we need to rebuild effectively the management platform because nobody has it. Well, we have it actually, we have it today and you know, we were taking down big banks, telcos, people that want to manage across hybrid and public clouds. Well, what is service mesh? So let's get in, because you, so you worked work right. for Pat, was your old boss, and then you were instrumental in the Nasir acquisition uh, that went down between EMC and VMware, and obviously that was a game changer. If you look at uh, you know, pre nasira uh, and Pat Gelsner called it the shot heard around uh, the IT world, there really was a game-changing moment, it was a shift. That totally. was almost where the tide turned and, the, and the everyone shifted their sails and the wind was blowing in software direction. So, mm -hmm. I mean, look at I me, mean, pre-Nasira, what, we, what were we talking about? Right. Post-Nasira, what is it? So, I mean, explain Service Mesh and software. So, uh, Service Mesh is a hybrid cloud management platform and what we do is we act as effectively a service broker across you know, VMware's technology, Microsoft's technology, OpenStack, all of the public cloud providers and enable you to do policy-driven provisioning that's application-centric. Now, what does that mean? What that means is you can create one blueprint for your application and then you can click and deploy on top of VMware, on top of Microsoft, on top of OpenStack. So it gives you that vendor contestability and, and, and portability across these different software-defined data center infrastructures. Because you know, VMware's making a big play, you've got Microsoft making a big play. You know, we were just talking about George at IO Data. Those guys yeah. are killing it. They're embracing the whole open so compute, you, open can stack. Can you just clarify something for me, Sean? Absolutely. So, so uh, the, a lot of the big guys, you know, VMware, for example, Microsoft, et cetera, are talking the game, OpenStack, uh, of multi-hypervisor. Sure. So they sort of want to do what you just described. Is your strategy to just do it better, do it faster, be there earlier, or am I just misunderstanding? Well, we do it messaging? today. They're, they're going to build it. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to rip right, off so your message. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I know, Pat, Pat yeah. was awesome. He got up here sure. and, you know, <laughs> that agility, that's our, that's our product. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I love it. Have you entertained any buyout offers yet? <laughs> well, you know, we've, uh, we're, we're popular, but we're, we're, we're going big. I, I think we're on the IPO so track. Answer, <laughs> so that's a non-answer. Um, yeah. Okay, so they're trying to buy you. Okay, got that. Um, so let's talk about hybrid cloud. I'll see Pat yeah. Gelsinger. I hit a nerd with Pat with my, my off-the-cuff haymaker uh, called Halfway House. He called it a way station. There's a big debate. I think what, what uh, uh, people don't understand about what the, what the conversation with Mark Andreessen and Pat Gelsinger were sure. was at the Future of IT conference was there's a fundamental disagreement about what compute is going to look like. And so the reason why I brought up that comment about Halfway House was just kind of needle, and I didn't know Pat was going to react that way, but it's kind of good, good to have a memory like that, is that is hybrid just a delivery mechanism, or is it actually a product? 
right? So the question becomes, does compute just sit around in all IT ready to be used by applications? Do applications dictate to the policy of the infrastructure and get services delivered to them? And if that's the case, that's going that possibly could change the compute paradigm. So that's kind of, I think, Andreessen's perspective is that, hey, compute's just going to be everywhere. It's going to go to zero, infinite resource with virtualization. If that happens, what does it look like? Okay. So about utilization, server utilization, all those things go away. Software has to be written for that. So that's a different approach yeah. than saying, this is a product, this is a data center, extension. That's a pretty loaded question, man. Yeah. My so, goodness, how, so, do, how so do I parse that? So explain let me, let me explain that to the, to the audience. So a nuance where, where we sit, we sit across public cloud and private cloud and we believe that certain workloads, you need to run for compliance reasons today in your data center and, and we, have high, we work in highly regulated Fortune 100 companies, some of the biggest banks in the world, some of the biggest telcos. Those guys are, you know, have regulations that require, so I'm going to resonate, I'm going to align with Pat here a little bit. Of course, right? yeah, he's CEO of uh, VMware. You know, <laughs> however, with that said, we fundamentally believe that you're, you, have, you need to have fungibility across your public cloud and your private cloud and place the right resources at the right time, at the right cost, for where you're at in the life cycle of the application, and doing so in the, you know, the very the devops -y way, right? And so, because that we're the architectural control plane across public cloud and private cloud for our big customers that give them this vendor neutral posture, right? We also agree with what Mark is saying as well, right? For, for the, You're agnostic Yeah, the yeah, we're agnostic. You, you, we, yeah, we, we think both are going to happen, and we sit in the middle of that, and we enable people to do the right thing based on you know, policy at the right time. So it's, for us, it's great. We don't have a legacy to lose. You're saying right? you're not going to sub-optimize some part of the stack right. in order to drive your revenues or your licensing. Yeah, you, exactly. You can right. bridge legacy and bring uh, clean greenfield apps to the table. Absolutely, right, right. So you know, we're agnostic there, absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's a great place to be. <laughs> Until you get bought. Let me ask yeah. you about OpenStack. Let me ask about OpenStack. We're going uh, big. <laughs> OpenStack, as Pat says, is a framework, which is you know, obviously an interesting statement from yeah. Pat. And, uh, and he looks at it as a, as a market expansion opportunity, which is the right way to say it, I mean, I guess. Um, so I think OpenStack is the biggest threat to VMware, personally. Yeah. I, it, Look at their software-defined data center strategy, right? So you got virtualization of the network, virtualization of compute, virtualization of storage, and it, you know it's it's the same thing, right? So they've partnered with Canonical. We're partners with Canonical. I'm a huge fan of Canonical as well, and and the reason is. Zen is actually the hypervisor of choice for public clouds. They didn't partner with Red Hat OpenStack, right? Because that they're right in their grill, right? So <laughs> it's kind of an interesting partnering <laughs> strategy, right? Um, <laughs> it truly is. Well, I, mean, I have to be careful. I am at VMworld. So. <laughs> no, no, no. First of all, I mean Pat's right. I mean, you know, this is a geek culture, and and there people do care about what's in the engine. Yeah, Virtualization yeah. is absolutely critical. That's going to continue to be virtualized. So let's go back to our, our conversation about Nasira changing the winds. So right. th maybe the waters are still choppy and still there's a lot of work to be done and competition yeah. to be battled out uh, in this new dip battleground. So let's go through that. Nasira changes the game with software defined data center. That becomes a destination, yep. a marketplace, and there's networking, compute, and storage. Right. What is the competitive landscape look like for all the guys? What, what, are, the, what are the players, what's the ecosystem look like right now? Right. Well, I mean, if you look at just software defined networking, right, um, since the acquisition of Nicera. Now, you know, big switch, they're starting to really ramp up. Plum Grid, we're working with Plum Grid and one of a, a big telco deal that we just took down, doing some integration there. I think in almost every one of our large enterprise customers, we're starting to see some network virtualization as part of our blueprints and, and as we deploy things. I think it's I think it's here, I think it's now, it's real. And and then JR with Cumulus, what he, what they're doing is is potentially game changing for from a routing perspective as well. So I think that that's So we're going to have JR and yeah. uh, Peter Levine from yeah. Andreessen and Horowitz on today uh, shortly. So what should, what should we ask them? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm, I'm friends with both of them, so I'm not going there. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so let's get, yeah. back, let's get back to the cloud. So what's the competitive landscape? I'll see it's a, it's a growth market, so people are going to win. It's going to be winners. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's the winner, winning profile look like to you? So just generically, without naming names, what's the winners look like? Well, I think it's really interesting is what is the landscape today is you have the incumbents largely have, you know, piles of software that they've acquired in the past that they're trying to glue together and they're selling a vision that's you know six to 18 months out and they're saying trust us Mr. Customer, we'll build it. And, it, and actually what we're seeing is that 
I mean, first of all, we have a solution today that works today, and our customers are saying, well, we know, we know we're kind of, we want to get away from that vendor lock-in. We want an open, neutral management platform, and that's why we're embracing OpenStack as an alternative um, to you know, a pure single vendor management strategy, right? So, um, so it, let's talk about yeah. lock-in. So we, so we asked Pat the question, and, and they said a hardened top, this was like an infrastructure hardened top and you enable it, like an Intel processor did for a PC. There could be for a cloud kind of a base foundation that's hardened. That could be proprietary, right. but functionality is strong and versatile. Right. So where is that? Is, is there a hardened top? Is that a false premise um, and uh, a false promise, or is there one? Is infrastructure as a service with OpenStack going to be a open but hardened foundation that you can build on, be agile on top of? I think it's going to be. That's the bet I'm, I'm making, right? I mean, we're going we're gonna to support that. We're huge fans of OpenStack. I mean, it's, um, it, it's interesting, though, is that the, when, I mean, if you look at applications, how they were developed in the past, they were, you know, IT was always application-centric. You would, you would scope your application, just bear with me on this for one second. You would scope your application, you would procure your hardware, you would deploy your hardware into test, dev, stage, production, et cetera. And then when infrastructure as a service came up, they bifurcated the ability to spin up an empty virtual machine really quickly and to deliver business value and actually bring that to market, right? And now people, you know, uh, Cloud Foundry's coming in and saying, hey, it's, it's passed, right? Well, you know, you know, you got to put all these pieces together, right? And so there's a, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting times there. So Sean, uh, you were talking earlier about the, the customers that you talk to, uh, you know, want that openness, they don't yeah. want that lock-in. Would you agree that's, you're kind of in the early adopter cycle of those guys, that the majority of enterprises are willing to risk that lock-in for the safety of whether it's single vendor simplicity, or yes, it's going to work, I'm not going to get fired for you know, buying an IBM, that, or VMware in this case, et cetera. Is that a fair characterization? Do you yeah. feel like it's the majority of the market that's actually, you know? Every customer we're seeing, so uh, you know, we don't have 4,000 customers, but we've got a yeah. lot and we can't keep well, up. Well, but they're not hard to find, <laughs> right? They're not hard to find, right? Right. right. Um, in fact, we we're, were talking to a, a large bank that I can't disclose, and they're basically saying, look, if you bring one of the incumbents to the table, um, you know, th th that's not what we're looking for. We, you know, we need to drive, you know, 40 to 70 percent reduction in cost, and the only way to get to those numbers is, you know, OpenStack as an alternative, and and having a uh, not 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 buying into entire vendor lock. Can you can you explain why OpenStack as a well? So so Pat and it's it's funny. It, VMware is essentially depositioning OpenStack as a framework. Right. Uh, the guys from you know we had the guys from Rackspace on, and they don't they don't agree with that. They see it as the, the long game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the Rackspace guys get yeah, it. Yeah. Yes, clearly. So so um, the 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 guy, the customer that you just talked about, why is it or how is it that the, that OpenStack and using that that capability will lower cost by that 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 amount versus sort of the conventional approach? Right. Well, um, you, even though we're defying you, convention here, you cut out <laughs> all of the the. Uh, you know, license costs. Yeah, license costs, okay. right? And, which one. is, yeah, it's huge. Right. Okay. It's huge. License and maintenance and... Uh, so it's the Oracle factor. You look at the pie, 70% is, is license cost. Oh, yeah, you speak of Oracle, it's actually funny. It's all, a lot of the incumbents marketing today, marketing today is the Oracle strategy. Go out and freeze the market. Ah, we'll build it. You know, and then it, it's FUD for the guys who are actually doing it today, you know, so, you know, we're... we're, up, we're Challenge that, but we'll we'll take anybody on in a bake off because we actually can deliver. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, right. So it does, but it does work for Oracle. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. it's, uh, you Well, there's I don't know the big data space is uh, there's a lot of guys encroaching on. Yeah, but on, like you uh, said, that. they'll message it, they'll they'll co-opt it by a company yeah. and act like they invented it. Yep. So. Yeah, yeah. Sean Douglas, the CTO of Service Mesh. Thanks for coming out to the queue. I'll give you the last word. What are you most excited about right now? I mean, being a CTO at EMC playing with EMC Ventures where you were working on the Nasir deal, among other deals, you had your hand uh, creatively in a lot of the software-defined data center strategy. Yeah. Um, what's, what are you getting excited about right now? I should take it down deals, we heard that. What tech are you getting excited about right now? Um, so, you know, you talked about IO data earlier, right? So I think IO data, they're, they're embracing open compute, open stack, and uh, that just drives down costs and, and we're uh, partnering aggressively with them. There's, there's some interesting opportunities there. Um, so that could be game changing, I think, for the, for the industry. For so that. we had George Sussman yeah. on earlier, and in fact, I used his line from that yeah. interview with Pat and said, if software-defined data center is all software, what about the, the data yeah. center, the physical asset? And, right. and that's an interesting perspective. You kind of forget about yeah. that. Whoa. There's actually a, a, a plant, a physical plant yeah. inside the, the company. I, I, mean, I think honestly, the thing that I'm most excited about when you ask me what I'm excited about is that you, know, you had everybody that's on stage here is talking about software-defined data center, 
hybrid cloud and the need for a new management platform, this entirely validates everything that we've been doing and are doing, and, and we have product today, and everybody's talking about roadmap. So that's what I'm stoked about. <laughs> 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 Service mesh, check them out. I mean, obviously, great. Hey, that's yeah. good. They're, they're the product. <laughs> <laughs> they have the product. Whatever so, uh, the cool aid everyone's passing yeah. out. All right, John Douglas, thanks for coming. CTO, Service Mesh is the cube. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.